In this tutorial, we will see the model types in Idea Statica connection. The type of a model is a crucial factor during analyzing stages. So why is that and what do I mean by model type? It means that it is the degree of freedom assigned to the member. Let's imagine that I have an articulated beam here and there is only a single bolt on the connection. That could be an unstable connection, so I need to reinforce it somehow. In this case, I have to say to the software that this member has continuity, although the connection may be unstable. So if we have a look at the model type drop-down menu, I can only work with axial and shear forces. Because we cannot say that it is a fixed connection due to possible stability problems. Let's illustrate it with another connection. As you can see, we have a single bolt connection, so we can easily say that it does not have a bending moment when a shear force applied. When the software start to calculate the connection, it will start to rotate and cannot stop. In order not to assign a non-existing moment, we have to change the model type to axial and shear forces. Then we will see that red cross, and it tells us this element is only working with axial and shear forces. And also it is possible to release the bending moment in only one direction, like this. So in this case, the element only works for axial, shear forces and the corresponding moment. Going back our first model, and we can select a bearing element in our model. You do not have to select the actual bearing element of the structure, however as Idea Statica is a finite element program, we need to set some boundary conditions at some points. Otherwise the model would be unstable. In this case, it is in our interest to apply boundary condition. That is, to define the bearing element as the column. Since once we introducing loads, we introduce them on non-bearing elements. For example, let's imagine we introduce loads for beam 1 and beam 2, but no for the column, in this model. If the bearing element is the column, this loading procedure is enough. However if I select the beam 1 as the bearing member, the loading procedure will change. In this case, I have to introduce the loads for beam 2 and both ends of the column. Of course this will increase my workload. As you know, we have to do all the combinations, therefore an additional line of forces has to be in 80 combinations. As a result, my recommendation is to select a member as a bearing element, which requires introduction of fewest loads in the model. There are easy ways to change the bearing element. The first is, you can click on set bearing here. The second way is, right-click on the names of elements and choose set bearing to select the element as bearing. The other way is, simply right-click on the element I can also quickly modify the cross-sections of the members by right-clicking in the graphic window.